Hey, what is up mortals? It's Edward Sale here and before we get into today's video, there's something I'd like to say. I'd like to let you all know we have a merch store. Some of the items in it are only available for a limited amount of time. So if you're interested, go into the description and check it out. Each purchase helps us make more content. Secondly, if this video hits 300 likes by the end of the week, we will continue this what if. Thirdly, if you didn't know, only 43.5% of you guys are subscribed to us. So please hit that subscribe button and click the bell icon. Now with that out of the way, let's get into the story. Where we left off, Izuku had just fought Shinso and won, leading to Shinso being taken by a mysterious man. With Izuku being in Overhaul's makeshift nurse's office, he watches in horror as the next match is announced to be Bakugo vs Uraraka. Uh, it's a real shame about that Shinso kid. His quirk isn't that villainous compared to most heroes these days. I would take him in, but I already... Overhaul goes to explain as he writes some medical notes and turns to face Izuku, but Izuku had already ran out of the office. He wanted to warn Uraraka on how dangerous Bakugo was, especially because of his apparent training with Stain. As Izuku ran into the waiting room, he was hoping the match hadn't started and that Uraraka would be in there, but it was empty and he could see the match was already started thanks to another wall-mounted TV. Now running outside to the student seating area, he made it just in time to see Uraraka's plan in action. She had just used her gravity quirk to float a lot of debris into the air and right above Bakugo. As the debris started to fall, Bakugo just held up one of his arms and gave Uraraka an unimpressed look. Then he unleashes a powerful explosion as the debris gets close to him, destroying a lot of it and blasting the rest out of the arena. The blast was so powerful it blows Uraraka out of bounds, winning the match for Bakugo. As soon as he was declared the winner, Bakugo walks back into the stadium without saying a word. Izuku chases after him, meeting him at the other end of the corridor. At first, Izuku starts berating Bakugo for going overboard on Uraraka. From what he had seen on the TVs and monitors, the match was very one-sided. Weren't you at the nurse's office or something? I guess you didn't hear what Mr. Akagaro said. Bakugo mutters as he stares down Izuku. Akagaro was Stain's second name for anyone who doesn't remember. Izuku just stands there a little shocked. Bakugo was right about not hearing what Stain had said. He said someone should never hold back against a worthy opponent, and I live by that. Bakugo explains, shocking Izuku even more. He couldn't wrap his head around the thought that Bakugo had respect for someone else. He was like a completely different person. Now out of the way, Deku! Bakugo roars as he pushes past Izuku to get to the other end of the corridor, but it was strange how he acted completely different there only to switch back to his normal self in an instant. It reminded him of himself and one for all. Back with the festival, the final round 1 match was about to begin. Toga vs Monoma. The fight starts with Monoma calling out Toga for siding with class 1A students for the cavalry battle, saying she portrayed her class. It's not my fault none of you wanted to team with me. Besides, Zuku is so much cooler than you. Toga announces hitting a soft spot for Monoma. He hated being compared to the person he was competing against. Then, with incredible speed, Toga runs behind Monoma before he could properly react. Her plan was to use what she had left of Tokiyami's blood to transform into him and use Dark Shadow to get Monoma out of the arena. But before she could transform, a familiar looking liquid starts to ooze from Monoma's hands as two more Monomas appear. Both clones were utilizing a different class 1B quirk. One was using Tetsu Tetsu Steel Quirk while the other was using Kendo's Big Fist Quirk. Toga was shocked twice would let Monoma copy his quirk, especially because they were close friends. That will be explained later. She doesn't get much time to think about it as the Monoma clones rush at her. With Toga transforming into Tokiyami, they start fighting. As they were fighting, Izuku and Shigaraki both noticed how Monoma was blatantly trying to copy one for all. His mannerisms and his way of speech all matched one for all. It was pretty easy for Izuku and Shigaraki to pick up on since they've spent a lot of time with him. The way he used Kendo's big fist quirk was just like how One For All used his hypertrophy, which allowed One For All to enlarge his arms. Though Monoma could only enlarge his hands, he was still punching like One For All. The other clone using Tetsu Tetsu steel quirk was fighting just like One For All when he was using his shock absorption quirk. Even though the quirks were nothing alike, the clone was still attempting to block attacks with his body just like one for all would when protecting people. Monoma himself just watched from afar. Even his posture was just like one for alls. Toga is quickly overwhelmed by the two clones of Monoma. There wasn't much she could do with only one dark shadow, 
and not knowing any of Tokiyami's special moves. Monoma was also being very vicious in his fight. He wasn't showing any mercy to Togo as they fought. Monoma ends the fight by knocking out Togo, winning the match and leaving the audience speechless. Monoma flicks his wrist to the audience with one hand behind his back and then bows, just like one for all. Zuko was starting to think Monoma was taking this the next one for all thing a little too serious. As Togo was put on a stretcher, Zuko and Uraraka would both rush to the infirmary to make sure she was okay. When they got there, Togo was already under some anesthetic with overhaul disassembling and reassembling any of her damaged or hurt limbs. Also in the room was a couple of class 1B students like Kendo and Manga Fukudasha, just to name a few. Jeez, you kids are getting more violent nowadays. Overhaul mutters as he finishes up with Toga and puts back on his white gloves. Almost straight away Kendo asks if Toga is going to be fine, which he explains thanks to his quirk, she'll be perfectly fine and she'd even be cured of any sicknesses she'd had, which also got Overhaul to say he was amazed she didn't have any diseases from drinking other people's blood. Everyone sighed in relief on hearing that. It was like Monoma really had it for Togo ever since she sided with a class 1A student. He was getting fanatical about hating 1A for a while, but Togo only made it worse. Hey, you're a uh, Izuku Midoriya, right? Kendo asks with Izuku just nodding. Look, Monoma is going crazy over this next one for all thing. He tried to forcefully copy all our quirks. I bet he's going to do it again in this next fight, which will be against you. Kendo explains, really showing the extent of Monoma's fixation with being the next one for all. She then starts to beg Izuku. Please, he won't listen to any of us. We need you to knock some sense into him. Izuku obviously agrees to this, but on one condition. They let Monoma copy their quirks one last time. This catches Kendo off guard. She outright says that's a terrible idea, but Izuku tries to reassure her by saying he needs her to let him do it so he can get through to him. Later on as the fight was about to begin, Izuku took a second to calm his nerves and to see what quirk he was using. As he tries to check, he could hear the voice from before. This time he could actually hear. Although it was faint, he could clearly make out one for all's voice and it was saying something along the lines of, don't fight. Izuku tries to listen for more but the voice was gone. Thinking, Izuku had a few ideas on what the voice meant and what it was doing in his head. It could be trying to tell him not to fight his quirk changes and the voice itself could be a remnant of one for all left inside the quirks he passed on to him but this was mainly speculation. Moving on to the fight itself, as Izuku and Monoma walked out to the arena, Izuku noticed how Monoma was even trying to imitate one for all's walk. It was just like Kendo said, he was fanatical about being the next one for all. The fight itself starts with Monoma using Ju So Honouki's quirk softening to basically turn the ground under Izuku into quicksand. Then Monoma attacks him by changing his quirk to scales to fire scales at Izuku. Even the way he fired them was just like one for all, holding out one arm while putting the other one behind his back. Acting quick, Izuku uses stored pain, blasts himself into the air and out of the quicksand using stored pain. While in the air, he pumps his arms with his stored pain and fires himself at Monoma, slamming his feet into him. The hit sent him back but not enough to get him out of bounds. Come on, with attacks like that you'll never be the next one for all. Monoma chuckles as he rushes. When Izuku landed back from the kick, he gave Monoma a scowl as he mutters back. You're right, I won't be the next one for all. Shocked, Monoma stops his attack. He was surprised Izuku would admit to something like that so easily. But then Azuka continues, but neither will you. Monoma didn't know how to react to this. He hadn't a clue what Azuku was trying to get at, but he listens as Azuku talks more. We shouldn't be aiming to be the next one for all. We should be aiming to be better than him, become our own heroes. The crowd goes silent as they heard what Azuku said, leaving even twice speechless. Monoma just stood there, staring at Azuku dumbfounded. A part of him knew Azuku was right. Stop fighting like one for all and show me how Nato Monoma fights. Izuku roars followed by cheers from class 1B and Shigaraki. Monoma starts to laugh as he looks at his class while agreeing with Izuku before saying, oh, I think I'll do you one better. I'll show you how class 1B fights. Monoma announces followed by more cheers from 1B. Izuku smiles back as he prepares for the proper fight, remembering the remnant of one for all in his head. He wasn't going to fight against the quirk change and go with them. 
With Monoma knowing he only had limited time with his copied quirks, he goes straight back to fight Izuku, using all his quirks just like his classmates. Like using the scales quirk to attack and defend, or using Togaru Kamigari's quirk to rapidly cut through Izuku's forced quirk activation tendrils. Throughout the fight, Izuku noticed if he went with the quirk changes he could have more control on, but it was meaning he learned how to change it between it. He wasn't fighting for the quirk he wanted anymore, and said it was like he was in tune with it. As he began to overuse his quirks, he fears that he would completely strain his body just like one for all. But something strange happened. His right arm became oversized and pure black, just like when he became that creature while fighting Shinso. On this normal arm, he could use as many quirks as he wanted at once, but at the cost it hurt him a lot, though it did fuel his overflow quirk. He also unlocked a new quirk, muscle augmentation. This quirk made his body heat up and start to burn as it increased his strength. It was the same quirk that made Izuku faint in his room a couple days after the USJ attack. It was strange it was only appearing now. Monoma was getting worn out. Izuku could clearly see it took him a few more seconds than usual to switch in between quirks, and he also knew he was running out of time with his copied quirks. Then Izuku used his muscle augmentation on his Nomo arm, while also using his tool arm to turn his fist into a large hammer. All of that was causing Izuku great pain, fueling his overflow quirk to levels beyond what Izuku was used to. Then he pumps it into his non-normal arm and blasts himself at Monoma, slamming his hammer fist into him, sending him flying out of bounds into the ball of the stadium. Monoma barely activated Tetsu Tetsu Steel Quirk in time, stopping him from sustaining any real damage but still knocking him out of bounds. As Monoma gets out of the hole in the wall that he just made, he just chuckles. Well done Midoriya, well done. Thank you all for watching the video to the end. Now there's a few more things that I'd like to go over before the video ends. Firstly, I'd like to let you all know we have a merch store. Some of the items in it are only available for a limited amount of time. So if you're interested, go into the description and check it out. Each purchase helps us make more content. Lastly, on behalf of We The Celestials, I'd like to thank the writer for this video, as well as the editor for this video, their details will be in the description. If you're a voice actor, editor, or writer, or you're interested in becoming one of those, go into the Discord that is in the description of this video and hit up the head of one of those areas. We're always looking for members to join us. That's it from us for today's video, so thank you all for watching, and don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you're interested, and hit that like button if you like the video. Until next time, peace out mortals, have an amazing day.